Are you eager to learn how to master Sony ProRes RAW enabled cameras in conjunction with Atomos Ninja and DaVinci Resolve? Well, you're in luck. In this video, I'll guide you through the entire process, drawing from my own experience of filming my latest two short films using this exact workflow. So without further ado, let's dive right in. First of all, you need to stock up on hard drives like there's no tomorrow because, man, ProRes RAW or Cinema DNG, which we will be dealing with in Resolve, devours gigabytes faster than a director's eye roll when the cinematographer suggests shooting a pivotal scene in black and white for artistic effect. And do not forget, you'll need storage for backing up your footage too, so brace yourself because cost can escalate quickly, especially for longer projects. Take my latest short film for instance, clocking in at 15 minutes, it gobbled up a whole whopping 2.7 terabytes. Ah. However, diving into ProRes RAW is absolutely worth it, especially if you crave that additional color fidelity provided by 12-bit footage. Plus, no more pesky in-camera noise reduction that can smear and lower the details in your footage. As for recording media for the Atomos Ninja 5, I opted for a more budget-friendly approach. Instead of splurging on one of those pricey Angelbird SSDs, I snagged myself a cheap Samsung SSD and printed out this custom enclosure on my 3D printer. When using the SSD enclosure shipped with the Ninja, it sticks out from the recorder like this. However, with the custom printed SSD enclosure, it appears much more compact and streamlined, satisfying my OCD tendencies. It's important to ensure that the SSD you're using is sufficiently fast, otherwise you risk encountering dropped frames during recording to the Ninja. Additionally, it's crucial to invest in a proper HDMI cable for the connection between the camera and the Ninja. I encountered some issues with a couple of cables that simply didn't seem to cooperate with ProRes RAW at all. When linking up the camera to the Ninja, the process is relatively straightforward. Simply navigate to the setup menu, Go down to external output, choose HDMI output settings, then go down and enable raw output. In the latest firmware update, the Ninja will automatically switch to ProRes RAW format. Keep in mind that you'll lose some active in-body stabilization and also in-body lens correction functionalities when using the ProRes RAW workflow. Also further down in the HDMI output settings, you also have Rec Control, which enables you to start and stop recording on the Ninja with the camera trigger itself, which is very convenient. I found that using this monitor mode called PQ gave me the best approximation of the final image, instead of using a standard lookup table. So after shooting your cinematic masterpiece, it's time to transfer the footage into DaVinci Resolve and delve into grading all of that glorious 12-bit goodness. But there's a huge problem. DaVinci Resolve doesn't support ProRes RAW and most likely never will because it is a direct competitor to their Blackmagic RAW format. So the workaround to import ProRes RAW footage into Resolve, you'll have to convert it to another RAW format, namely Cinema DNG. You have a couple of options for this conversion process. Firstly, you can use Assimilate's Play Pro Studio. I believe you can get a discount through Atomos if you register your Ninja, so check that out. Or if you're on a Mac like me, you can utilize RAW Converter, a handy app available on App Store. So in RAW Converter, the process is simply to select your files, choose your desired compression ratio, I usually go for 3 to 1, and then start the conversion process. RAW Converter will then render out the footage into a Cinema DNG still image sequence, ready for importing into Resolve. Inside of Resolve, using DaVinci's own media browser, you'll import these still images and Resolve will recognize them as a film sequence and will also automatically link the audio file contained within the sequence folder. Don't use the import command under files menu because that one is stupid and can't for the love of god recognize a film sequence in front of its nose. Now within the color page you'll notice that all of your raw tools are readily available under the raw tab. This grants you full access to fine tune and enhance your footage directly within Resolve's powerful color grading environment. Under this drop down menu you can choose how you want Resolve to interpret the footage and my personal preference is 
to select black magic film. From this point onward you proceed with your usual color grading tricks, but with the added advantage of having much greater flexibility thanks to the raw controls. If you have difficulties playing the cinema DNG footage on your computer, there are a couple of adjustments you can make to ease the strain on your system. And also on the preferences you can select the lower resolution on the Cinema DNG RAW format to make it even easier for your struggling computer. That's all I got for now, I hope this helps. If you got any questions let me know in the comments section below. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!